Re Zero, Side Story, Otosu Wins Internal Affairs Struggle Line 1, Chapter 1. Otto-san, I find it unfair that you're always traveling together with Subaru Summer, with such a rather violent comment, Otto was stopped by the call of a maid girl, the mansion's novice was no longer an appropriate expression to describe her skill. The girl, who during this year had gained enough skill to call herself by the title of a maid, was named Petra, there was Petra, her face charming, her cute cheeks reddened, making a cute statement, to which Otto smiled awkwardly. The place was the Roswell Manor's Hall, the time was early morning. Although he had been walking around the site to relax his body, which had hardened after finishing the paperwork that had taken him the whole night, his sleepy head ended up receiving one unthinkable accusation. No, I think it is absurd for me to be told that, or rather, that is just this major. Is that so, though? So you haven't been secretly asking the master to please let you be together with Subaru when he goes out? That means I'm being treated like a pretty creepy guy here, doesn't it? When he saw Petra's doubtful eyes, Otto made an exclamation loaded with a denial of extraordinary strength. The focus of Petra's suspicions was in the plan to visit the Watergate city, which was abruptly decided yesterday. Frankly, other than the chance to jump into a well-prepared opponent's pocket, Otto himself did not find much of interest in this. But even so, it seemed to be an object of envy for Petra, because, after all, in the list of those destined for the Watergate City Priestella, Petra's name was nowhere. I think it cannot be helped, though. Petra-chan, you have had plans to attend that meeting directed by the Margrave for a long time already, after all. That's... I understand. I mean, that's something I suggested myself. Leaving a childish tone at the end of her sentence, Petra vexedly pinched her uniform's apron with her fingers. Petra, who would not be accompanying them to Priestella, would be playing the role of standing next to her master Roswell. This was, in fact, something that she herself had proposed, and a challenge to. Therefore, shall I go and speak with the Margrave, then? It's fine. I'm not a kid anymore, I can't keep causing trouble for others with these things. When Otto made a light diversion, Petra clearly and promptly replied with her own determination. Otto heard her doubt lacking decision and burst into laughter, causing Petra's eyes to open wide with an R. Otto-san, you're evil. You were just testing me, ha ha, forgive me. But your answer was prompt, wasn't it? That made me feel at ease. While Petra expressed her anger with swollen cheeks, Otto apologized to her. Still, in the depths of his apology lay genuine relief, which Petra's decision made him feel. Although he felt bad for Petra, he wanted her to excellently fulfill her role as Roswell's guard at the meeting. Roswell's behavior had had no questionable points to be seen during this year. Ever since the disclosure of his plans at the sanctuary, Roswell had been vigorous, actually doing his business as a supporter. This meeting was the result of said year. Since Otto would not be able to accompany him to that place, when it came to the topic of who to put in his place, it was Petra, Subaru, Emilia, obviously Ram, and even Garfield and Frederica, who had been affected by his plan, showed Roswell tolerance. That was a virtue of them, not forgiving him was way easier than forgiving him. For Subaru and the rest, those who were able to do it naturally and without anguish, Otto felt appreciation. Therefore, he and Petra, those with the ability of not forgiving Roswell, were necessary. I kindly ask you to act as the Margrave's babysitter. Petra-chan, you are the only one who can do this, good. I was going to do well even if I wasn't told to, and you, Otto-san, make sure to watch over Subaru and Emilia for me. Beatrice-chan too, you take your eyes off her for a second and she disappears, you know. And Garf-san. Well, he's pretty burly, so maybe there's nothing to worry about. Hmm, that is an incredibly precise evaluation. By the way, are you worried about me? Dash. Otto-san, you'll be all right, won't you? Why should I be worried? I really don't understand why I'm being looked at with such a confused face, you know, with a face that looked more incredulous than he had imagined, being directed at him when he was just asking for the sake of testing her once more. Otto's laments echoed high inside the Roswell Manor in the morning. Chapter 2 Otto Summer, may I come in? Along with a graceful knock, 
spoke and showed her face the beautiful leader maid who owned long golden hairs, the one who arrived, her green eyes cast down, acting somehow apologetic, was Frederica, the woman who managed the tasks of the maids working for the Roswell Manor, seeing her visit his workplace, oh, Otto raised his eyebrows, Frederica-san, how unusual for you to come at this time. Your break time starts after the end of fire time, or am I wrong? That is right, today I will be laying tea and baked sweets out in the dining room. Petra will also be making very fluffy sugals, and... Excuse me. I have strayed away from the topic. While she walked forward to the center of the room, Frederica looked a little embarrassed as she put her hand on her lips. She could be seen making that gesture whenever she smiled or looked straight ahead at somebody. It was probably something that she did to hide her fangs, which were just a tiny little bit pointier than a human's, and it seemed to have ended up becoming a habit. Although Otto did not particularly mind it, maybe it was something that a mature woman would pay attention to. Because, whenever she went loose and gave a broad smile, she and Garfield looked very similar, for they were siblings after all. Otto Summer as it appears that Petra was impolite earlier this morning, I offer an apology from my side too. I have already made sure to firmly warn that girl. While Otto pondered such a matter, Frederica bent herself deeply at the waist and spoke. Hearing what she said, no, no, Otto shook his head sideways. How exaggerated. What she did was not anything I would call impoliteness. Petra Chan and I always talk that way to each other. Although, honestly, I myself wonder if that is acceptable. Come on, Otto Summer, even you think of it that way after all, am I not right? It is simply not correct. That child is surrounded by so many kind people, but if she keeps taking advantage of them like that, her growth will stop. You know, I somehow get the feeling what you are showing is, rather than consideration towards me, concern for Petra Chan's future. Ah, that is not something that I can completely deny. Before Otto's reproachful glare, Frederica smiled awkwardly, as if she had given in to the pressure. Although it was brave of her to conceal nothing, it was a well-known fact that Frederica doted on Petra and was trying to bring her up to be a splendid maid. Petra truly aspired to improve her skills, so, naturally, she idolized the woman who was not only loving towards her, but also skilled at her work, and therefore it was evident, even from an outsider's eyes, that they had a good relationship. So, would her performance at the upcoming meeting be like some sort of culmination for her growth? Indeed. That child is a fast learner when it comes to work, too. I just cannot take my eyes off her. With a nod, Frederica proudly affirmed the way her favorite apprentice had grown. Seeing her calm expression, Otto closed one eye and then broached a certain subject. Well then, could it be that it is your younger brother whom you are actually worried about? It seems like nothing can be hidden from you, Otto Summer. That is correct, indeed. As you know, Petra is within my eye's reach, whereas Garth is where my hands cannot reach him. Her worries unending, Frederica put her hand over her ample chest and breathed out a sigh. Even Otto understood Frederica's misgiving and the unending fears that she had about her younger brother. In Garfield's case, what caused that anxiety was his surroundings, rather than the person in question. During this year, Otto had had several complications, due to his quick-tempered younger brother figure, who possessed strength that was superior to that of an ordinary person. Although, fortunately, Garfield adored Otto as an older brother and did show him respect. Whether that child's behavior will cause trouble for Emilia Summer is what I am worried about. Up until now, that child has had no actual involvement with those related to the royal selection, but, this time, he shall do so. Certainly, that makes me anxious too. Nevertheless, the anxiety that Otto harbored towards Garfield was not as strong as the one that Frederica harbored. Despite appearances, Garfield was prudent enough to keep his mouth shut when matters out of his own area of expertise came up. Were he to choose between the two, that kind of anxiety became way bigger when it came to Subaru. Stirring up trouble at the scene through unnecessary remarks was his specialty. Incredibly, things often went well because of it, but that did not stop the griping pain in Otto's stomach. Emilia Summer is no exception in that respect, though, how troubled are you, Otto Summer? However, Otto Summer, I must apologize for making you deal even with these worries of mine. No problem, I am used to. 
Never mind, I sound like I consider myself a punching bag, do I not? He he. Know that we do rely on you, though. At the end of the day, Otto Summer, this faction would simply not function if you were to go missing. I humbly beg of you, take care of everyone. Especially my foolish brother. While Otto scratched his cheek with a finger, Frederica bowed politely before him, with a smile. Otto admired her posture, which was beautiful enough to fascinate anybody, and at the same time, he felt himself being deeply moved by her words. Oh, Otto Summer, is something wrong? I don't know, being treated this decently has moved my heart much more than I thought it would. I swear, I will do my best. Firmly, in front of the surprised Frederica, Otto raised his fist to show his newfound enthusiasm. And then, with his fist clenched, Otto tilted his head. By the way, Frederica san are you worried about me? About you, Otto Summer? Ah, uh, what does that mean? Even Frederica san does this to me? And so, seeing how her perplexity was so genuine and lacking in any malice, Otto ended up wounded. Chapter 3 Otto, I'll be entering whenever I want. I just brewed you tea, so thank me. When Otto returned to his workplace after taking a bath, he was greeted by such an insolent voice and attitude. Inside the room, sitting on Otto's desk and elegantly tilting a cup of tea, was a pink-haired maid girl who possessed a sharp sweetness, ram. To her imposing attitude and non-existent respect for those around her, Otto bitterly smiled and shrugged his shoulders. At this point it is no longer surprising, but why now? I would think you would be in the middle of treatment with the Margrave at this time if it were a normal day, or am I wrong? Yes, that's right. So I took a moment from my work hours and decided to drop by. And even during this break, my time with Roswell Summer is being chopped to bits. I hope you're conscious of that, that's an awful way to phrase it. Nevertheless, aware that such things were just typical of Ram, Otto took the cup that had been put on the desk for him, and carried it to his mouth. An exquisite scent and flavor passed through his nose and tongue, making him inadvertently fall into a trance. Seriously, Ram San, your skill as a tea server is so first class, of course it'd be. Besides, the other merits Ram has are like stars. However, since the time when they can peek from a sky clear of clouds is short, they must chose whose head they should float above. I know that much, though, that's no good. As expected of Otto. Excuse me, could you stop scorning everything with my name? Ha! Snorting, Ram brushed Otto's appeal aside in a way that admitted of no reply. Although, in his current state of mind, even that was something that he had already accepted as part of his daily life, Otto's lips broke into a smile immediately after that. What? If you feel joy at being scolded, then you're hopeless, so you are aware that you are scolding me. No, I'm thinking— there has been an awful lot of people coming to me with tasks today. Ramsan, you, too, have come for something about Priestella, have you not? Narrowing her light pink eyes, Ram kept her silence at Otto's words. But the very fact that she did not deny it was enough as a backup for Otto's conjecture. She, too, realized that her silence was just an affirmation, and let out a sigh. Who we're dealing with is a proper royal selection candidate. On the contrary, here we have the not proper Emilia Summer going out to meet her personally. You understand your duty as her advisor is an important one, right? Should you not say it in a little softer way? Glossing over the facts isn't going to make them change. Besides, Emilia Summer's course of action will affect Roswell Summer's greatest desire too. And I don't want to see that face of discouragement when things fail either. What? No, I just wonder, whose face is it that you do not want to see? the Margraves or Emilia Summers. Seeing Otto tilt his head, TCH, Ram mercilessly, strongly clicked her tongue. It was not very noticeable due to how hard to understand Ram's feelings were, but she was genuine and loving. In fact, Subaru, Garfield, and even Beatrice were on the range of people whom she was considerate towards. Anyway, you've been warned. Looks like you've done drinking the tea Ram herself brewed. Think of this as your reward being already paid in advance, and then go give it all you've got out there. What, so this was a bribe? At least, I want one more cup when I come back. That settles it, then, as she lightly descended with grace from the desk, Ram loosened her lips. 
Before that smile, Otto sighed, feeling like somebody who had been just thoroughly finished. So, since they were already talking about agreements, Otto looked back at Ram's smile. By the way, this will also be the first time I have actual involvement with the royal selection, are you not worried? Stop asking when you already know the answer. How nasty. Chapter 4 Could it be that they trust me, after all? Remembering his exchanges with Petra, Frederica, and then Ram, Otto tilted his head in puzzlement. Since he had stayed up during the whole previous night, today he planned to rest a little, before morning came. Before doing so, Otto washed his teeth in the bathroom, and went back to his bedroom, ah, Otto Kun, and, during the way back to the room, who he happened upon was Emilia dressed in her nightgown, with her long, silver hair damply wet, Emilia was unexaggeratedly beautiful as she smiled. It was not unreasonable at all for Subaru to lose his mind over her, thought Otto from an objective point of view as he bitterly smiled. Emilia Summer, will you be going to sleep soon? Yes, I will. I gotta rest well and prepare for Priestella. I know I might end up causing a lot of trouble for others, but I'll definitely be doing my very best. Clenching her fist in front of her chest, Emilia eagerly spoke with a look full of motivation. But, she continued, if you're there, I'm sure it'll be all right, Otto Kun. Because we rely on you a lot. Well then, good night. Otto Kun, I hope your dreams are sweet tonight. Waving her hand, Emilia left a smile behind for Otto, turned her back to him, and took her leave like that. While he saw her off from behind, Otto slowly shook his head sideways. Looks like they trust me, after all. And so, letting out a slightly uplifted voice, he breathed a deep, long sigh as he looked forward, 